Great. Adam, honestly, I'm really excited. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Exile is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Glad you liked it, dude. I did. I really did. And before I even talk about the film, though, I was just realized today, happy 30th mm -hmm. anniversary. It's uh, Dance Me Outside's 30th anniversary this year. Oh, no way. Yeah, <gasps> I, which I love that film. I, I love Bruce McDonald's work, but I love that film. Uh, Dude, I got to do something about that. Okay. You just <laughs> you just inspired me to do something this year. So that's good. Because it's a great film. It's a great film. It's my, it's my favorite film that I've ever worked on, dude. Really? Yeah. Why is it's that one your favorite? Right. Uh, it's my favorite movie because before that I did a film called Squanto, A Warrior's Tale. And it was a juggernaut film to work on. I was the lead role, the first for a Native uh, uh, actor. And getting up at 5.30 in the morning every day, and you're the center of attention, and you have to deal with the pressure of, of, of availability for like four months. I was having a nervous breakdown. I was crying every day. I mean, every night before sleep, my family came to see me. My favorite uncle came to see me. It didn't work. I fell into being homesick. I fell being into away from home for the first time. And I understand what culture shock means now. Wow. And after this movie, I was like, I'm done. And my uh, stepdad at the time was like, you can't be done. This is what you love. And I said, pops, I'm I'm done, you know. And my friend called me and he said, Adam, there's this movie, Dance Me Outside. You're the guy, Frank Fence Post. And I was like, I don't want to do it. Come on, just for me. And I said, fine, I'll audition. Sent the audition, I didn't care. He said, oh, man, Adam, you were terrible in that. I said, I just don't care. He said, come and meet him personally. He's a great guy. And I said, fine. So I flew to Toronto, met him. And I was just like, okay, let's do this. Can I do this? Can I? He said, do whatever you want bring it to life. And I laughed and had so much fun. And I stayed in acting because of it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. So you'd really hit you'd really hit a rough spot after the pre previous film. And then that one sort of brought it to life. Yeah, dude, it's like, you know, a lot of people don't talk about the responsibility of being on time, but also trying to be the best have the best take the best this and uh it, it wears you out after a while and um i had now the perspective of what it is to be part of a big studio and what it is to be part of a small independent and they're both different beasts mm. but they both require the responsibility and because of those two experiences i have uh, this uh, this ability to uh, to treat both as just a film, mm. you know, and I know the difficulties of the lower budget to the higher budget, but to me they're all the same. I just have to pick the ones that really can help me project yeah. who I am and what I can find in 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 the film I'm working on. Well, you know, that's a great segue to Exile because Exile is such an incredible uh, character. I, his, his name is Ted, if I'm correct. His name is Ted. Mm. Um, what attracted you to him? Because this is a really intense role. How did you prepare for mm. that with this one? This is, he's, he's like got mm. so many things he's dealing with on screen. Yeah, a lot of it starts with trust with the director and uh, Jason James, I worked with him on Monkey Beach, who's the producer, and he said he wanted to do a show, something together. And years later, he said, I found that something. Tell me if you like it. Whoo! When I read it, I was like, oh, I told my wife, I was like, oh, this is going to sink deep. It's going to hurt. She's like, just do it. Go kick ass. And I told him, I said, I'm giving you everything for this film. You have to protect me and make sure that I'm safe in this vulnerable space. And he's like, I got you. And it was, 
a truly a, a, a test of my capabilities emotionally, mentally, and uh, I, uh, uh, I I think I, I passed the test in some way. <laughs> but I'm glad you liked it. No, it, it really is great, and I love, I love you know I don't want to give away any spoilers, but I mean I love yeah. the the tension between you know what's real and what isn't. Uh, yeah. as Ted is just processing this little by little. Um, yeah. But it, when you're when you're in a traumatic state, yeah. all of it is real. It doesn't matter, you know, how how you see the things. If you if you it's like when I create imaginary circumstances for characters that I've done, that's real to me. Yeah. And the characters I play, it's all real. And it's just a matter of how you um how you uh um carry it with you after you go home you can you can have a choice to cry yourself to sleep like like uh, squanto you can have a chance to let the dreams just flow of all the people that died in war when you're working with Clint Eastwood on flags of our fathers and with this one you you have to cry to release the trauma of 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 mental illness that everybody has you know what i mean i'm lucky i have uh, i got a therapist and um if if, if something kind of overflows too much i have someone i could talk to and say hey i opened up this bag of worms what does this mean you know that kind of thing yeah but it all starts with the director like james is a great guy and if you don't know the director you form a relation, a relationship of trust immediately because, you know, we're going to work and we're going to make this the best we can uh, do that, you know. That's got to be so important because, like you said, this is a very vulnerable, vulnerable role in many ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're doing exile, you know, uh, I had to open up to tell Jason uh, a lot of my story of growing up with trauma. And, uh, you know, it starts with my mother dying, uh, getting killed by a drunk driver. She's eight months pregnant with my sister and died in a ditch in my house. So my reflection to motherhood is is trauma. Mm -hmm. And my father died two months later. He drowned drinking and on medication. And so when you when you watch the movie and you see me driving, on a flashback of how this family was killed by me, I put myself in my father's emotional state of being, mourning for the death of his wife. And the picture you see in the car is my mother's picture to give me an emotional intent reality of how I feel about her dying. So uh, in, in the seat of this collision, that changed my life forever. I'm giving the audience the perspective of my mother and my father and how I feel about it. And uh, and uh, it was really hard, but Jason was able to, you know, he was the one who was like, hey, do you have a picture of your mom you could put in there? Oh, I was <laughs> nearly just vomited at that thought. But it's my ode to my, my parents for giving me the creativity that I express through film by the trauma that was presented through uh, the deaths of them and also the image of my mother in a film that could last forever for my family, her relatives, her brothers, sisters, et cetera. And uh, that's, that's what I put myself through to hopefully help people deal with their trauma in, in some sort of way. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, that's one of the things I appreciate the film. I mean, I can only speak for myself. You know, I went mm -hmm. through deep, uh, a period of my life, deep depression, uh, yeah. and, and emotional breakdown, if you will. So this, and this idea of healing that comes up in the film, uh, it, it touched me, it touched me deeply. And mm -hmm. one of the things I, I thought was interesting is the, your, uh, Ted's wife, I forget what her name is, uh, her character, Camille, Camille makes yeah. a comment, says, sometimes we need someone else to show us another perspective. 
And I was wondering your thoughts on, on healing as a communal process, as mm -hmm. opposed to just feel better as, as you know, yeah. at one point she's just saying, you need to deal with this yourself. But the idea of healing as a communal idea, what you thought of that? Well, it's um, one, you need support, you mm -hmm. know, and in the film, you get to see that my wife supports me no matter what. And in my life, my wife supports me no matter what. Like I have a th personal therapist. We have a couples therapist. Uh, we had a family therapist and we passed that test. So we don't do that anymore. And um, we're finding strength working through our trauma, but you need someone to really help you with the reflection of what you're saying and thinking and feeling. Because if it's just her and I communicating this, it's gonna get into kind of an argument. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm finding therapy, everybody should find a good therapist. Their rebound of articulating what they just heard kind of settles everything down so we can, you know, kind of shift through the trauma experiences. And uh, it's been working so good for us. And now we're launching our production company and writing our own films, our first script is based on true stories and deals with uh you know trauma but it's all about love love will get you through anything if you you know work through trust and honesty and all that stuff it's pretty um pretty good man and i hope a lot of people can find support through um depression anxiety and all that stuff absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. And the message of, you know, how do you cope with death? And everyone in our lives die. And what are you going to do when this happens? Are you going to just throw your life away? Or are you going to try to admire the, the beauty in life that we've had for a moment of time and carry it with you in, in, in a healthy way, which I've tried to do with my films by expressing my emotional outlet of trauma for my parents, but also growing up in that time, there was other trauma surrounding other families that affected us. And that's kind of like a, a message that I continue with communities that I go talk to. It's like, you know, we've normalized trauma. Yeah. We've accepted it to a degree that we're, if your uh, if your brother is an addict on the street homeless, you love him for that. You don't see him different from someone who's, you know, wealth well well to do because we we've, we've been able to accept as indigenous that trauma has been carried with us for two hundred years even longer. But we've accepted the destruction of our identity, and now we have to you know, understand we can pick ourselves up and transform and get back our identity, our knowledge, our creativity, our dance, language, etc. So that's kind of um, what I'm trying to project with people is like, what is your identity? Go seek it out. And all that seeking is just going to help you. Knowledge is power, you know. And, and there's such strength in that. I mean, we see that in, in Ted in Back to Exile here. Mm -hmm. He's lost his sense of who he is. You know, um, Camille says, you know, he's not the same, but he's still him. Yeah. There's, there's uh, you know, there's a sense. I, I almost, watching it, I, you almost get the sense that Tess, Ted is sort of lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the, well, he's, he's, Ted is scared. Yeah. Because he loves his family so much that he doesn't want them harmed in any way. And also, he's alone. And he's trying to find an understanding of, like, how do I get acceptance of love if I'm alone? And in the film, you find out what he tried to do. And... Um, and, you know, with me and the loss of my mother and father growing up, uh, it took me, man, it took me about 30 years to find out what abandonment really means. 
And it took me this film to understand how to accept abandonment, but to let it go and to not run and hide. Because being alone was my safe place. Mm. And how to project that is like, if, if my wife and I were gonna broke, break up, I would run and be like, hey, see you later, I'm good, into abandonment, my safe place. But I, I choose to say, look, let's work this out because I don't want abandonment anymore. I love our family. And um, that's where we led our lives to help both of our traumas and, and, and heal through it. And it feels, it feels good. So I hope I can help people to, to, to seek um, some sort of connection with someone to, to know that you're loved and you can be taken care of, you know, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's beautiful. And but it sounds like this was a really cathartic experience for you in some ways is playing this character. Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of the prep that you do, um, it's just like a, a blanket when you step into the role. And when 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 you say action, it's almost like like spirits or people are trying to tell you something or your experience comes out when you say something and you can't help but just be open to whatever comes forward and uh and and i just leave it to that it's kind of you know you do your prep but when you're shooting that's when everything transforms and and you just got to know that your director, Jason James, uh, Camille, is going to be there for whatever you're throwing emotionally because whew, it's sometimes exhausting, dude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But oh, it, uh, it's like there was a scene where, where Camille stops me from running away. And I want to keep running. And I look to my right and I see the forest. So I'm now in the moment of her and I communicating. But as an actor, I can feel the forest yeah. calling to me. The spirits are saying, you can feel safe in these woods. We'll take care of you. Mm. So the love is in front of me, my wife, but that essence of running away and being alone and abandonment, that's my exit. Hmm. But she's the one that gets me out and I have a chance to make this work, you know? But a lot of people see the scene, they don't know what I'm feeling yeah. and what's, you know, calling to me. And that's, you can't plan for that. That just, happens yeah Maybe right in the moment right in the moment um, yeah it's a it's like a bird kind or a breeze comes in and you follow that breeze and now you're over here and it's like what is this all you know it's kind of yeah. just being available is what it is you know yeah I, i've heard it called like jazz and that's what it sounds like the way you're describing this idea that everybody's playing their part and things are constantly moving but uh, yeah, Adam, yeah. I, I love this conversation. I'm sorry, we're out of time. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I wish we could keep talking, but thank you so much. I love yeah. your work, and it is just an honor to chat with you. And the film is wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm glad you appreciated it too. Yeah, and uh, we'll see what the audience thinks when it releases. But it's uh, it's one that really has inspired me in many ways. Absolutely. I'm glad I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so much. Have a great day.